Starting out as a young chef, my biggest influence was definitely French cuisine. And when I was 23 years of age, I was determined to learn as much as I could. So I set off for Paris to work in some of the most demanding and exacting kitchens in the world. And my passion and love for French food really took hold. First up for breakfast, a French patisserie delicacy. Madeleines, those shells of a light sponge flavoured with lemon and poppy seed. For lunch, my take on a French classic, the salad niçoise with a gutsy caper and anchovy dressing, accompanied by a delicious pear and creamy goat cheese tartine. Tilly! And my youngest Tilly gets a taste for French cooking as we create chicken fricassee. Looks delicious. Served with herby sautéed potatoes, followed by lavender creme caramel. This is my ultimate French food. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. My ultimate French breakfast isn't complex or flashy. It's just simple, elegant, and delicious. The secret to a really good Madeleine is it's light, fluffy, delicious, and it's perfect with the coffee in the morning. So melt the butter gently. Next, crack three eggs. That was one of the most exciting things about living in Paris. There was always something there in that little pastry shop that I used to live above. Got to incorporate the sugar. And then give that a really good whisk, because it's important to incorporate some air. Now, the secret to whisking is a big, beautiful balloon whisk. The bigger the balloon whisk, the more aeration you'll get in the mixture. So, the best thing to do is just go from left to right. And then change hands every 15 or 20 seconds so your hands never get tired. And tilt the bowl to your advantage as well. Now you can see the mixture starting to aerate. It's almost double in size. The more you whisk this, the lighter it becomes. So it starts to almost look like a light whipped cream. Gone is that dark, rich egg yolk colour. Beautiful. Once the eggs and sugar have become pale, creamy and thick, sift in the self-raising flour. Sieve in the flour. Now I'm giving my madeleines a twist by adding poppy seeds for a crunch and lemon for flavour. The zest of a lemon in there. Generous on the lemon. Lime is wonderful. Orange zest, again, beautiful. I've even made pink grapefruit madeleines with poppy seeds. Delicious. But lemon, for me, is the best. Pour the melted butter down the side of the bowl so it cools down even more, and then combine. Start mixing that in. It's really important at this stage that we don't beat the mixture. I want to keep that nice, aerated texture across the madeleine mix. So I'm going to use a spatula now and just gently mix my butter in. Now give that a good mix. And they say that the longer you make the mix up in advance, the higher they raise in the oven. Look at that. It looks beautiful. Leave that to sit there. And we'll butter and line our moulds. You can make these in little miniature Yorkshire pudding moulds. I've even seen madeleines being cooked in espresso cups. So if you haven't got the traditional madeleine tray, Yorkshire pudding trays are just as good. Lightly butter the inside of the tray. Take a tablespoon of flour. And the secret now is to line the mould with the flour. That stops any chance of the madeleine sticking. Tap the sieve into all the little grooves. And this will ensure that they'll come out instantly. Then all you do then is just stand up the tray and tap it two or three times and you'll see the flour roll out. So there you go. The baking sheet lined beautifully, no excess butter and no excess flour. The beauty of this recipe is that you can make it the night before and then simply bake it in the morning. When you're ready to go, put the mixture into a jug to make it really easy to pour into the tin. Give it a little stir. So you've got that nice even distribution of those poppy seeds and just gently... Lovely. Fill them up to the top. Oh, beautiful. So much easier pouring this from a jug because you get the exact amount in, into the oven, 180 degrees. Do not open that door before 10 minutes. 
and wait for that wonderful surprise. It smells amazing. Now, a little tap on the side of the tray. And you just all pop out. Beautifully done. That smell is unique. That nice, soft, crisp outside with this lovely, fragrant, fluffy centre. And the secret of a great Madeleine, as the French would swear by it, is this lovely little mound on top. They call it the nipple. But that is the confirmation that it's perfect. My poppy and lemon Madeleines are a sophisticated continental start to the day and take me straight back to Paris. Coming up, I'll be showing you a fantastic French-inspired lunch and dinner. But first, here's a look at some of the key ingredients you'll need to add a bit of Gallic flair to your cooking. The one ingredient most associated with French food is garlic. And it's no surprise almost every one of my French recipes has it in. Garlic is a member of the allium or onion family and comes in all shapes and sizes and strengths. Pink garlic from Lautrec in southwest France is considered the finest with a strong sweet taste. Elephant garlic has massive bulbs and a much milder flavour. But today, I'm using a common white type you get in all the supermarkets. It's a great all-rounder. Brandy really is the ultimate spirit of France. It's made from either distilled grapes or fruit. Armagnac from Gascony in the southwest is made from wine distilled in oak casks and it's the oldest recorded brandy in France. Cognacs also are wine brandy, named after the town in poitou charentes region in the west, where it must be made to be classified as cognac. Calvados is an apple brandy made from distilled cider and comes from Normandy. The French cook with brandy a lot and tend to ignite or flambe it to bring amazing depth of flavour to dishes, like the chicken fricassee I'm serving for dinner. France is justifiably famous for its cheeses, and one of my favourites is goat's cheese. Called chèvre in French, they produce hundreds of types, from the very mild and creamy to the strong and pungent. And because it's so delicious, the French keep most of it for themselves and only export a tiny amount. Luxurious soft goat's cheese goes perfectly well with sweet pears and earthy walnuts in the open sandwich I'm making for lunch. When I was living in France, I got to know two very distinct traditions of French food. On the one hand, there was the delicious haute cuisine I cooked all day in the restaurant. And on the other hand, there was the food you ate in people's homes, which is a lot simpler to make, but still absolutely delicious. My ultimate French-inspired lunch is very light, bright, and really takes me back to when I lived in Paris. It's my take on the salad niçoise, served with a delicious goat cheese and pear tartine. Think of the niçoise as an assembly job of delicious ingredients brought together with a fantastic dressing. The secret behind my salad niçoise is in the dressing. Spoon Dijon mustard into a pestle and mortar. Some people top the salad with anchovies and capers, but in mine, they're the base to the dressing. We're going to grind that to a paste. And then get the garlic in there. Season well with black pepper. It doesn't need any salt in there because of the anchovies. Add a couple of tablespoons of red wine vinegar, olive oil, and lastly, flat leaf parsley to give the dressing freshness against those deep flavours. It's a thick, rich, substantial dressing. Dressing done. Now for the salad. Boiled potatoes, green beans, and eggs. From a rolling ball, seven and a half to eight minutes. You should keep that nice, yolky, creamy texture in the centre. Once the eggs are ready, put them into cold water to stop them cooking, and this is a great trick to peel them. So much easier peeling eggs when you use the water that they've been cooling down in. And the water will seep underneath all the shell. And so the whole shell just gets peeled off in one beautiful big layer. Pop it out. Now, beans. 
Mm. Nice and crunchy. Season the beans and potatoes whilst they're still warm, so they absorb more flavour. A little drizzle of olive oil, salt, pepper, and just let them sit there. Whilst the potatoes and beans cool down, I'm doing a simple French open sandwich, which is called a tartine. This is delicious. First, I'm toasting baguette on the griddle. Lightly oil the griddle pan. Get your bread. Stick it on there. Take a pear. It goes brilliantly well with goat's cheese. Slice the pear into finger width pieces. That's the colour we're looking for. That dark, crispy texture. Now for the goat's cheese. Give it a season. Doesn't need salt, because a little fresh goat's cheese is already quite salty. Then a handful of crumbled walnuts. They go under the grill whilst I put the tuna and niçoise together. My secret to assembling a great niçoise salad is to start in the middle of the plate and add ingredients layer by layer. So there's one thing I'm always missing at the bottom of salads is dressing. So I like to put it on the plate first. Baby Jim lettuce is great because it's robust and holds that heavy dressing. Then add firm, waxy salad potatoes and green beans. I like them to have a bit of a crunch. Canned tuna can be fantastic. I'm using a good quality one in olive oil, which has been drained. Next, baby plum tomatoes, which have a lovely, intense, sweet flavour. And then my eggs. That nice, dark, rich yolk. Beautiful. Yolk's still creamy inside. These are little olive niçoises. This will work just as well with other black olives. And then your dressing. Drizzle that round gently. Beautiful. That is a niçoise in heaven. Now, tartine. Wow. Just the smell of those grilled walnuts. That is beautiful. A simple but very elegant tuna niçoise with a delicious goat's cheese sandwich. Wonderful. My vibrant and gutsy niçoise salad with that incredible anchovy and caper dressing served with a pear and goat's cheese tartine, too good to let the French keep it all to themselves. Coming up, it's dinner time. Helping me cook my ultimate French dinner is my youngest daughter, Tilly, who's dressed for the occasion. I do not want to get those little slippers caught on fire. What are their names? Rampo and Judith. I'm sharing the wonder of cooking. How cool is that? Magical. Jack's gonna love this. Looks delicious.